Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Stephanie and this is my slinky dog Nova and in today's video I'm talking to you about toys. Toys are one of my favorite things to sell right behind stuffed animals of course and this video is not going to have any plushies in it because I did that video last week with my sales from August and September and this is going to be just toys. I have I think one book and one video game in here also and these are going to be my sales from the months of August and September of 2021. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I talked about this in a previous video, but I started getting rid of my My Little Pony collection. Some of it was mine. Well, most of it was mine from when I was a kid. But some of this was also stuff that I had collected for my daughter. And this item here is one of the newer ones. This one is from 2002. And it's a silly sunshine pony. And she has this long, long hair. And she sold for $25. Up next is this Lego set. This is from the Lego Movie 2. This is uh, Shimmer and Shine Sparkle Spa Castle. I got this at a bin store. I think it was 70 to 80% off the retail price. So I didn't make a ton off of this sale. This one sold for $30. And I had several of these, which made this appealing. Now, normally, if I would only make, you know, 15 bucks off an item, I probably wouldn't get it. But I had, I think, eight of these that I started off with. And I have, like, two or three more left. Okay, for $30, I sold this Star Wars lightsaber that can also mount on the wall. This was something that was really cool. It was kind of a little cheap looking, but really cool nonetheless. It would make a really good nightlight or just a room decoration for a kid or a Star Wars fan. Anyways, I picked this up at a consignment sale. I think I paid like $5 for this, and it sold for $30. Part of my My Little Pony collection was this Bush Wooly Hugster Princess Sparkle Friend. And this guy I sold for $30 and he was a tiny little guy. And there are several different colors and styles of these. And if you don't know the names of them, because I certainly don't remember the names of them, there is a great website that can help you identify the names of any of the My Little Pony characters. And I'll put that link down below in the comments. Okay, this is a Fisher Price Laugh and Learn Gingerbread Cookie Tray. And I also picked this up at a kid's consignment sale, and this one sold for $30. I just love this. I thought this would be great for, like, the holidays coming up. If, like, a little baby or a toddler wanted to help mom or dad, you know, make cookies. These little pieces actually came out of the tray, and I just thought it was super adorable. I would have loved for my kids to have something like this when they were little. Okay, now you're going to look at this and go $45 for a Cozy Coop. What a great deal that someone got. Well, look again. This is a tiny little Cozy Coop for a dollhouse. Little Tykes has a series of dollhouses, and one of them is Little Tykes Place. And I believe that's what this one actually came from. There's a whole series of Little Tykes dollhouse pieces, like the turtle sandbox, a swing, a trampoline, and a slide. And I've sold some of those other pieces already also. But this Little Tykes Cozy Coop car, just the car only, sold for $45. And I want to say he sold almost immediately, within a couple of days. But definitely keep a lookout for this one. There are several different variations of this Cozy Coop. Some of them have the creepy, crazy eyes on it, and some of them don't. The ones with the eyes are worth significantly more. Okay, now this one is part of my daughter's My Little Pony collection. This is a set of 11 My Little Ponies that we sold for $50. Now, each one of these ponies wasn't really worth that much, so I lotted them all together so the buyer could save on shipping, and then they had an instant collection that they could play with right from there. So if you have something where each individual piece is not worth a whole lot, think about lotting them together. I had several different sets that I made, and I think I've sold out of almost all of them now. So what I tried to do is sort them as best I could by either generation or style or something like that. So I wasn't making huge, huge lots of like 50 to 100 ponies, but rather smaller lots from like 10 to 15 ponies each. Some of them only had like five in them. Kind of, this is one from my personal collection. This is a generation one wizard and gingerbread pony. So this one actually was two ponies. So what had happened is a buyer messaged me, said that she wanted two ponies, and would I combine them so she could save on shipping? Of course I would. So what I did is I just combined the listing into one. I took one of the listings, so this one was the wizard pony, and I inserted 
the gingerbread pictures into that listing, updated the description, just copied and pasted the gingerbread into the wizard uh, listing. The more I say wizard, the weirder it sounds. Um, but that's the name of this pony, believe it or not. You know, somebody with not a 10 year old mind named this. Wizard. Uh, anyway, so the two ponies sold for $50. Now the gingerbread pony was not in the greatest condition as you could see. She was very yellowed. She was very, very well loved. This one was probably one of my favorite ponies as a kid and I think you can really tell that here. But don't let that stop you from listing things that are well worn or well loved like this. Uh, some of these things just did not age well just because of the materials they were made out of. They just weren't meant to last, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, some of these things. But as long as you disclose the flaws and the item's description pretty well and take good photos, you should be okay. Now, somebody that had these ponies as a kid may not want a perfect one anyways because their pony that they lost may not have been in that perfect condition. So, just price accordingly. Obviously, I wasn't going to get as much as one in perfect condition, but that was okay. I still got $50 for two ponies, and I'm really happy with that. Now, the great thing about these ponies is, yeah, I was sad to sell them, but they were just sitting in my closet for probably about 30 years. See, I'm 37. I have a daughter that I kept them for, but she's 10 now, and she's well past the My Little Pony, you know, playing with age. And it's kind of sad them sitting in the closet, never getting played with, never getting touched. You know, I thought about, you know, Andy's toys. It was time for them to move on to Bonnie's home and someone that was going to love them again. Okay, I picked up this set of books at a thrift store for only a dollar. This is one of those days that I just couldn't find anything at the thrift store. It was, used to be my honey hole, but then it really had dried up. And I don't really sell a whole lot of books, but I really glanced by the book super quickly on my way out and I saw this box set of books called Sweet Dreams Romances. I personally had never heard of these before. They just reminded me of Sweet Valley High and books like that from the 80s. So I picked them up and looked them up. So this box set sold for $60. Now I couldn't find a comp for a set with the box. So what I did is I priced each individual book out and then added a few more dollars for the, the value of the box. Now this is a side of the road find. I actually found this Barbie on the side of the road. No, this is not her new career, Streetwalker Barbie. Kind of looks like that here. She's not wearing any clothes. I'm tour guide Barbie. And she was in a white wedding dress when I found her, oddly enough, and it was all ripped up, all disgusting. I don't think it was a Barbie brand. She kind of looked like Madonna from Like a Virgin video is kind of what it reminded me of. Anyway, so this Barbie sold for $60. This is completely free, you know, obviously other than the fees that eBay charges me. But this is Bubble Cut Barbie. She's from 1962, so she's one of the original Barbie dolls. Now, this one had the green ear syndrome, so I briefly tried to clean that off the best that I could, but then I discovered I was taking a lot of time on it, and I was afraid that I was going to damage her makeup. So I stopped attempting to try to clean it because I didn't want to damage her any further than she already was. So I just listed her a little bit lower than some of the other ones. And someone that restores Barbie dolls and someone that knows what they're doing can fix her up. Okay, this is a find from a thrift store. I paid about $5 for this CD-ROM computer game. And at the time, I really couldn't find any comps for it for this 1.666 Doom game. I saw other versions of it, but not this one. So I, I kind of did a best guess on the price and it sold for $125. Now somebody told me that they are making a movie based on this video game series. I have not looked into that, but that would definitely explain why it sold. Anyway, since then, I have seen more of these come on to eBay, but this one sold onto Mercari. And I love selling on Mercari. So I also feel like on Mercari, there's a lot less competition of sellers selling the same exact item as I am. So if a buyer is searching for something and if there's only like one or two available, there, you have a better chance of selling your item. This is another consignment sale find. I think I paid about 20 to $25 for this. This is a Fisher Price Little People Discovery City playset. Now I've sold different versions of this playset before. 
And what's really fun and cool about this is that there's lots of little buttons that the kids can press to make sounds. This one, the track turns around. And I had some of the accessories, like the cars and some of the people that it came with, but $140 for this, which is really fantastic. So keep an eye out for these Discovery City sets. Okay, this one may not necessarily be a toy, but some kids dress up all year round, not just around Halloween time. This is a Pottery Barn Kids, the Lorax costume. And I got this at a church sale, so I only paid like a buck or two for it. And it sold for $142. Pottery Barn costumes in general are a bolo. Almost always they're going to be worth something. Plus, this is a Dr. Seuss character, and really any of the licensed characters could be worth a lot more. So keep an eye out for this. This is just this really derpy looking hood and body. So the person that's going to wear this, their kid's going to have to wear pants or not. I'm not going to judge them. Maybe they're not going to wear pants. I don't know. But so this is a costume, $142. Okay, now at a yard sale, I picked up this Lee Middleton baby girl, baby doll. <laughs> now, I really don't like baby dolls a whole lot, but I saw this with Lee Middleton and these reborn style dolls. So they're basically their baby dolls that feel like a real baby, like they're weighted like a baby. They're really, to me, they're kind of creepy, but people just love these. So I paid about two to three dollars for this one and it sold for $149. Now the picture, just taking the pictures to me was super creepy because I, I always like to get measurements of my items and show them in the photos and it just seemed a little CSI to me. I didn't like it, but I loved getting the money for this, so I got over it real quick. Okay, this was another church sale find. I think I paid about a quarter for this. This was in a box of stuff that I had. This is a nursery needs time out clock that I sold for $80 for just this little plastic clock. So what you do is you turn the nose and the clock's face turns from a happy face to a sad, angry kind of face. It's really, really cute. There weren't any others listed at the time, so I got to name my own price and I based it off of previous price history and, and actually this item is in my pricing guide video. So if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it if you wanna see more about how I price my items. Okay, this is an Only Hearts Club doll and clothing set that I sold for $49. I picked up this entire lot for about $5 at a yard sale. Now this one had three dolls and then lots of clothes that, and little accessories that came with it. And if you're gonna sell these kind of dolls, you wanna look up the character of the, of the doll that you have. Cause some of them I found are worth more than others. So I just lotted these all together. They went to one buyer. So they had a nice little fun set to play with. And for $30, I sold this Hallmark Recordable Lightning McQueen Storybook. Now I love selling these books. I pick them up every now and then or every time I can find them. You just wanna make sure that they work and the batteries aren't corroded on the inside, but people love these books. So what you can do is you can flip through and read the book and record it. So when the kid goes back, they can hear somebody reading it to them. And we have some of these that my mother-in-law has recorded her voice on for the kids. And then I have another one that my sister recorded on for my kids. And they're a lot of fun. They make a great memory. Okay, this is another consignment sale pickup. This is a Baby Alive Real Surprises doll. Now, I don't know a whole lot about Baby Alive dolls. I know that there are several out there that are worth a lot of money. It's mostly gonna be the older ones. I think this one might've been from like 2012. And thankfully this one had the manual and all of her accessories so I could tell exactly which doll this was. And this one sold for $180. And I like this doll even less than I like that Lee Middleton doll because I hate the eyes on this doll. They looked super possessed to me. Don't like it at all. Again, I like the money, so I got over it. This, this is a multiplication slam math game. So this is like a fun game that kids can learn their math problems on. This one was multiplication style problems. And this sold for $30 on Poshmark. Now I hardly ever sell clothes and I hardly ever sell clothes on Poshmark. What I do sell a lot on there is toys and stuffed animals. So if you're not selling and cross listing your toys and other items on Poshmark, you are really missing out on a whole customer base. 
Now I talked about this before in my July video. I had two of these uh, Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles transforming car trucks and this one sold for $25 so I had two of them one set of listings basically and they both sold within like a week of each other. Okay, this is another Poshmark sale. This is a Monsters Inc. Sully basket and it could be used for Easter or I suspect it's probably going to be a Halloween basket and <sighs> Soli's face on here. He looks like he got high from, I'm guessing, the laughter or the screams. I'm not sure. I don't know who approved this, but it sold for $45. Okay, and this is an item I picked up at a discount store. This is Maleficent Glow Wings, and this sold overnight on Facebook Marketplace for $35. I think I bought these for 3 bucks, and they were super cool. So they light up and change color, and this is going to make a really super great costume piece for somebody. I wish I would have been able to find more of these, because I'm sure they would have sold just as quick. Okay, that's all for this video. If you liked it, please give me a great big thumbs up. Please leave me a comment down below. I'd love to read your comments, and I do reply to each and every one of them. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. There's more of this great reselling content coming your way. And I'll see you next time. Bye!